In this video, I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of implementing email verification and a forgot password workflow in your application using JWT token. These three features are essential for building a secure, user-friendly application. If you haven't watched our previous video where we build the registration page, please click on the pop-up banner or find the link in the description below. Keep watching. When I first started learning Spring Boot, I struggled to figure out how to implement these features. There were plenty of resources out there, but most offer generic advice like use Spring Security or send an email with Java Mail Sender without explaining how to piece everything together. Step 1. Setting up the MyApp User Model Why do we need this model? If you've seen our previous video, we created MyApp User Model, which represents the user in our application. It serves as the foundation for managing user accounts, including details like username, email, password. Initially, the MyApp user class looked like this. A table named MyApp user is created with columns ID, username, email, and password. Now, we need to extend this model. You may be wondering why we need to extend this model. To implement email verification and password reset workflows, we need some additional fields. That is verification token, verification status, and reset token in the database. ET me explain how they work in the context of your application and why they're so important. Let's start with the verification token. Here's how it works. When someone registers for the app, the backend generates a unique token for that user. The token is stored in the database, and the application sends an email containing a link like this. When the user clicks the link, the application retrieves the token from the URL and checks it against the one stored in the database. If the token matches, the user's account is marked as verified. So now inside your MyApp user class, we will be adding three new fields. Private string verification token. Private Boolean is verified. A column name equals reset token. Private string reset token. You've got a column for explicitly naming that field in the DB. Good move, keeps it clean. Then let's generate the usual getters and setters. This leads us to step number two, implementation of email verification. All right, so let's get right into it. In the last video, we had a simple signup system where users could register and we just saved their details in the database. But we weren't verifying emails. That means anyone could just put in a fake email, sign up, and start using the app. Obviously, that's not good. So now, we're going to fix that by adding email verification. As we were saying, when a user signs up, we're going to send them an email with a unique verification link. Now, let's walk through the updated signup logic. First, in our previous video, after registration, our API simply returned a MyApp user object. Let's refine this by returning a response entity instead. We'll first check if the user exists using the find by email function. We'll implement this in our MyApp repository, which will accept a string parameter. When a user tries to register, we check if that email already exists in the database. If it does, we need to figure out whether they've already verified their account or not. If they have, we just return a message saying, hey, you're already registered and verified. But if they haven't verified their email yet, instead of making them sign up again, we just resend the verification email. So here's what's happening in the code. We will get the email from repository, generate a new verification token. For now, we will use a simple string, save it in the database, and send them an email with a link to verify their account. Here. I'm not adding the code for sending the mail. We will do that in the later part of the video. And next we will return the response by saying verification email resent. Check your inbox. That way, if they signed up before but never clicked the verification link, they get another chance without having to register all over again. We so far covered two logics for registration. One, if the user present and verified. Two, if the user present and not verified. Now, what if the email is brand new? 
Well, in that case, we go ahead and create a new user. But this time, we don't just save them in the database. We also generate a verification token, save that along with their details, and send them an email with the verification link. Let's talk about how we actually send the email. For that first, let's create a Java class in service folder called email service. So here's what's happening in our email service class. This is where we handle everything related to sending emails, whether it's for verification, password reset, or any other email notification in the future. Before we dive into our email service, let's first set up the email configuration in our application.yml file. This step is crucial because without the right SMTP settings, our application won't be able to send emails at all. So, in our application.yml, we have this configuration. Now, what does this do? Spring.mail.host is set to, which means we're using Gmail's SMTP server to send our emails. Port 587 is the correct port for sending emails using TLS. Username and password. This is where we specify the email account that will be sending the verification emails. However, there's something important to note here. If you're using Gmail, you can't just put your normal password here. Setting up email configuration in Google account. To make this work, you need to generate an app password from your Google account. Let me quickly walk you through the steps. One, go to Google account security settings. Two, enable two-step verification if you haven't already. Three, once that's done, you'll see an option for app passwords, click on it. Four, select mail as the app and other as the device. Name it something like Spring Boot app. Five, click generate and Google will give you a 16 character password. This is what you should use instead of your regular password in the YAML file. All right. Now that our email configuration is set up, let's move on to the email service class, which actually handles sending the emails. In our Java file, first, we need to create a reference to Java Mail Sender, which is a Spring Boot utility that makes sending emails super easy. We also have a from field, which is the sender's email address, pulled from our configuration file. That way, all emails come from the same place without hard coding it in multiple places. Now we've got two need here one for sending verification emails and another for forgot password emails. But instead of writing two separate email sending implementations, we keep things clean and use a single method called send email that takes in different parameters depending on the type of email we're sending. So let's break this down. When a new user signs up, our registration logic calls send verification email. This method just sets the subject to email verification defines the path where the verification link should go, and passes the user's email and token to the send email method. The same thing happens when a user requests a password reset, except this time, we use send forgot password email, which changes the subject and URL path accordingly. But the real magic happens inside the send email method. First, we construct the action URL, which is the actual link the user will click. We use Servlachiri Components Builder, which is a fancy way to dynamically generate a URL based on the current server context. That way, it works no matter where we deploy the app. We append the token as a query parameter so that when a user clicks the link, our backend can extract it and verify their identity. Now, instead of sending a plain text email, we're formatting a beautiful HTML email with a call to action button. The email includes a header with a subject. A message explaining what the user needs to do. A clickable button that takes them straight to the verification or password reset page. A backup plain text link in case their email client doesn't support buttons. Once the email content is ready, we create a MIME message which allows us to send HTML emails instead of just plain text. Then, we use MIME message helper to set the recipient, subject, sender, and the email body. And finally, we send it using mail sender.send. Now we've also wrapped the whole thing in a try catch block. This is important because if something goes wrong, like an invalid email address or a misconfigured mail server, we don't want the whole application to crash. Instead, we just log an error so we could troubleshoot later. And that's it. Now, whenever a user signs up, they'll get a properly formatted email with a verification link. Once they click it, 
will handle verifying their email and activating their account, which we'll cover next. But with this in place, we've already added a huge layer of security to our app, making sure only real users with real emails can register. Now, when the email gets sent, the user will receive something like, click here to verify your email with a link that looks like HTTP, localhost, 8080 verify, token equals XYZ123. When they click it, we'll check the token and mark their account as verified. But we'll cover that part in the next step. To use this service, the first thing we need to do is call the send verification email function from our registration controller. So let's start by auto-wiring our email service into the controller, and then we'll call the method right after saving the user, just like we discussed earlier. All right, now up until this point in our app, we've been using simple string tokens like XYZ or 12345 to verify users. And while that might work for a quick demo or a basic prototype, it's definitely not the best approach when we start thinking about security and scalability. Let me tell you why. These plain strings don't carry any embedded information. They're easy to guess or fake if someone really wants to, and we don't really have any control over how long they're valid. That's where JWTs come in. That brings us to the next step in JWT token. So now, instead of just generating some random string, we're going to generate secure, signed tokens using JWT or JSON web tokens. The nice thing about JWTs is that they allow us to embed meaningful information inside the token itself, like the user's email, and they also have built-in expiration handling. Plus, they're signed, so no one can tamper with them. Before we can actually use JWT in our project, we'll need to add a couple of dependencies to our project. These are essential for handling token creation, parsing, and validation using JWT. Now, let's get started. We create a new file in our project under the utils package and call it jwttokenoodle.java. Let's walk through what's inside this class. We define a secret key at the top. This is just a key we use to sign and later verify our tokens. We're using the HS256 algorithm here, which is a symmetric key encryption, and we generate the key using keys.secretkeyfer. Right below that, we set the expiration time for the token. In this case, I've set it to 24 hours, so once the token is generated, it's only valid for a day. Now let's talk about the actual methods. We start with generate token. This is the method we'll be calling whenever we want to send a token to the user, either during sign up or for password reset. What this does is it sets the user's email as the subject of the token, adds an issued time, an expiration time, signs it using our secret key, and then returns the final token as a string. Pretty neat, right? Then we have validate token, which simply checks if the token is still valid or expired. That way, if someone tries to use an old token, we can stop them right away. The extract email method comes in handy when someone clicks the verification link we sent them. It lets us extract the email back from the token so we can find the correct user in our database. And both of these functions rely on this private method called extract expiration, which just gets the expiration date from the token so we can check it. So yeah, with this class in place, we're now generating much more secure tokens and we've added another layer of safety to our app, all without storing anything extra in the database. We can start using it wherever we need to generate secure tokens. in our registration controller. So instead of using a simple string like we did earlier, we're now generating our token using the JWT utility function, specifically generate token. And we're passing the user's email as a parameter. That's it. This will generate a secure token for us. Let's test this out now. I'm going to register using one of my test email addresses. And there we go. The verification email has been sent. Now, when I click on the verification link in the email, you'll notice it doesn't work just yet. That's because we haven't built the verification endpoint. So let's jump into that next and wire it all up. To do that, we're gonna create a new controller called verification controller. 
Now this controller is really simple. It only has one job, to receive the token, extract the email, and verify the user. So let's take a look at the code. We start by annotating the class with at rest controller, just like we've done before. This tells Spring that this class will handle incoming REST API requests. Inside it, we auto-wire our MyApp user repository to interact with the database, and also the JWT token util to help us decode and validate the JWT token. Then we create a Git endpoint. At Git mapping, public response entity verify email string token. So this method is going to be triggered when a user clicks on the email verification link. That link, if you remember, includes a query parameter called token, and we extract it right here. Now, once we have the token, we use our utility method, jwtutil.extractEmail, to pull out the email that we stored inside the token when we generated it earlier. With that email in hand, we look up the user in the database. My app user user equals my app user repository defined by mail. Now, comes the important part, validation. We first check if the user exists and also make sure that the verification token hasn't already been cleared. If it's missing or the user doesn't exist, we immediately return a 403 forbidden response. Next, we validate the token itself, checking if it's expired or doesn't match the one we stored for that user. If anything goes wrong here, again, we return a 403 forbidden with a message, token expired. But if everything checks out, this means the token is valid and the user can be verified. So we go ahead and do that. We nullify the token to prevent reuse and mark the user as verified. And finally, we return a success response. Return response entity dot status dot body. So just like that, we've built a full email verification system using JWT, and we're safely verifying users through a secure and stateless mechanism. There's just one more thing we need to take care of, and that's updating our web config file. Right now, if you look at it, we're only allowing unauthenticated access to specific routes like REQ signup, CSS, and JS. But since we've added more endpoints under the REQ path, like email verification, we need to update our config to allow access to everything under REQ without requiring authentication. That way, Routes like REQ signup verify will work smoothly for users who aren't logged in yet. All right, now that we've updated the web config to allow unauthenticated access to all REQ endpoints, let's go ahead and try the whole flow one more time. I'm heading back to the registration page and entering a test email. Hitting the sign up button, and there we go. The email is sent successfully. Now I'll head over to my inbox and click on the verification link. You'll notice it's pointing to REQ sign up verify with the JWT token attached as a query parameter. Clicking on that and boom, we get a message saying email successfully verified. That means our token was validated correctly, matched the one stored in the database, and our user is now marked as verified. Perfect. So now, everything from user registration, sending a JWT-based verification token, and verifying that token via email is working end-to-end. -end. Feels great to see it all coming together, doesn't it? Now here's a fun little challenge for you. Try building out the forgot password feature using the same JWT flow we use today, generate a token, email it to the user, and let them reset their password securely through a link. And while you're at it, Level up your login logic. Make sure only verified users can log into the application. Once you've got it working, come back here and drop a comment. I'd love to hear how it went for you. If you found this helpful, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more Spring Boot content coming your way soon. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, happy coding.